Welcome back. <laughs> We're making a mask today. Not just any mask. The swordsmith from Demon Slayer, uh, Hotaru Haganizuka. Yes, I got it right. And no, he doesn't like his first name. And now you also may have found out that I am a huge nerd and that this channel is going to slowly shift uh, from sharp crafts and jewelry and whatever's on my mind to literally whatever's on my mind. Uh, it is a craft channel and this technically is a craft. So <laughs> we're going to go through the entire process start to finish of uh, making a mask. It might be broken up into two videos, but uh, we're going to sculpt, mold, cast, and paint uh, all the way through. And this is also my first time working with monster clay in earnest. I've had this pot of monster clay for probably <laughs> nice. I've, I probably had this pot of monster clay for easily seven, eight years. It just sits around, never dries out. Uh, it is, I learned about halfway through making the mask that a crock pot makes this like the best. Crockpot makes this like doable. You can supposedly, supposedly, you can microwave this stuff, but uh, I've had bad luck with microwave and gelatin prosthetics in the past, and I am not about to do that. Uh, also, because it is oil based clay, and that does make it a fire hazard, and it does make it possible to get hotter than water by quite a bit, and it does make it possible for it to ruin your entire life if you have a boiling pot of oil that happens to have particulate that makes it sculptable. In case you didn't know, I am the safety officer of my group. But um, <laughs> uh, this is this is a lot of me sort of learning what I should and shouldn't do. The refining of details is honestly it's the same in it's the same in wet clay. It's kind of the same like thought process across the board. But this like initial phase, if I was using the crock pot, this would have gone way, way quicker. Like trying to trying to scrape it cold is so weird. Uh, and it's so messy. And I got my clay so, so, so contaminated with other like bits and pieces of things and dirt and silicone and just crap everywhere on my uh, on my desk because I work a little sloppy. <laughs> That's also a mold of my actual head that I made by covering my face in plaster and not really leaving myself any breathing holes. I could just breathe out of the, the sides of it like it wasn't a vacuum seal. Uh, so that was an uncomfortable 15 minutes, but I filled it with plaster and needless to say did not throw that away I don't want to do that again and I wouldn't suggest that be how you make a mold of your head call me crazy I did something stupid and it worked out that doesn't make it correct <laughs> that is the story of this channel either way uh, I'm really working on the sort of like the base coat get a thickness for the mask that I like learn how I'm sculpting things everything is clearly in real time and it uh this is just how fast i move i do so so much coffee uh no uh this is sped up significantly there are multiple time lapses i try to keep it to the most sort of meaningful or interesting parts of making it uh you see me experimenting with ideas for the eyes and that chameleon look really is not it the nose though the nose came together pretty successfully pretty quick even though i touch and resculpt everything i think the nose being the anchor was um is something that i might continue to do in the in the future for future masks so there's a constant constant struggle to make sure that the dome of the forehead is nice and even and it doesn't like dip down in one side which is super super obvious once it's uh, sort of like in nice lighting with paint and it makes you look like you fell down off of a bicycle very hard, but uh, a little chin, that little that little bird beak mouth is so insane. Um, fun fact number two: I was going to make this entire thing out of wood before a convention that this was for, and I abandoned that idea so fast. 
so, so, so quickly. It took about two hours of me demolishing my garage and being like, no, 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 this is, there's a reason why this would be a traditionally wooden mask because somebody who spends most of their life making masks would be making it. <laughs> it's, it was completely off the table, at least for me. I have not enough experience, none of the right tools, none of the ability to sharpen those tools. Um, and if anything is not like super obvious what's happening right now, uh, this is just the rough out portion. So uh, I've thought about the eyes, I've redone the eyes. Uh, the nose continues to get refinement across the entire thing, but m just like little nudges here and there. Constantly, constantly, constantly looking at uh, reference. I have reference up uh, just off to the left that you cannot see, but uh, at least one point during the video, you'll see me pull it up. And that's why I'm getting more width on the sides. Uh, it all sort of works out. And then here is the goop. A little bit too long on high in the crock pot, but it solidifies it solidifies pretty quick. And it's it's maybe more wax than it is uh, oil, but or maybe even a combination of the two. I don't know what's in monster clay. I just know that uh, you can do this to it and then never use this crock pot for food again. <laughs> I have been gifted two crock pots by uh, the same friend and I told him that I would use both of them and I have and it's kind of wonderful. But uh, so the evolution of things, I could put more clay down faster with less problems. Uh, this scraper tool, this big scraper, this was sort of the champion of this phase. It it did way more work, way quicker, and there's this wonderful like four hour long uh, sculpting video of a guy sculpting a real human person for four hours who's just sitting in a chair, calmly explaining everything, and he's like, use the biggest tool that you have available. If, uh, if you need to make big shapes, or if you need to make a big shape like flat and like round it out, just use a two by four and he picks up a two by four and just slaps the ever loving crap out of um, the um, the sculpture that he just started that he covered in uh, like a ball and clay and he's just like bap, 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 done. He was like, all right, the rough is formed. <laughs> Obviously not the eyes, nose, and mouth, but like the forehead and like that that early shape, it was life changing to watch that person do that. So this is mostly a story time because technique wise you are watching <laughs> you're you're kind of watching that my my hands and palms and the slapping the slapping of the clay is certainly a thing but uh, this is not a how to this is a how I did that is much more accurate regardless what any tags or anything else say uh, so I completely scrape off the the eye lumps at this point I ha I think I had the final idea that I would go for, but uh, the eye lumps, I was just like, nope, get get the eyes and the forehead back to neutral. That'll be fine. The result of this is so much crap gotten that clay every single time that I did that. So refining the outside shape is important. Uh, the way the mask, the way the mask is proportional on the outside, outside edges is no small thing. So a couple tools, some slicing. Oh yeah, peel that bitch back. <laughs> cut that out. Uh, so everything that gets cut off or scraped off gets remelted. There is no waste in this process for uh, clay wise. Uh, unless some of it gets like ground into the ground if you can touch it, you can repurpose it. Uh, and if you filter your clay through a sieve later, uh, after melting the whole pot down, you can very, very likely uh, not have as much crap in your clay. Uh, so I've experimented with sort of layout lines. I keep trying to get it smoother and less uh, rough. Uh, and when I'm putting more clay on, 
just like with like resin or anything else, if you don't heat up or warm up the surface beforehand, it's not going to stick amicably. So I'm learning a lot of things very, very quickly. I was very worried about the little bird beak for a little bit, but the only thing that you have to do is make sure that you can get everything off. Or you have to make sure that it can come out of the mold. Like the tip can't be bulbous. Which in a different mask, in a different video, we will talk about that. But that the, that video is not this one. Uh, there's still more refinement to do on the bird beak and uh, laying out the cheeks and getting those sort of settled in. They went quick. I just had to, just had to do it. That's the story of this uh, mask. Is you just, you just have to do it. There's no, there's no waiting around and like thinking about it. It's just when it's go time, it's go time. Uh, so that little velvety texture is coming from a guitar string that is epoxied into a, a brass tube. And it's doing a wonderful job at sort of like scraping over and refining surfaces and roughing things up. So when I add clay now, uh, it's much nicer. But I needed a lot more forehead meat. I've scraped so much of it off that I had to put a lot of it back on. But I was able to get it nice and even. I'm very happy with it. Uh, and still thinking about the eyes, but the brows and the, uh, the forehead wrinkles... Those are, needless to say, very, very important. <laughs> so one thing that I was going to do was uh, hand make those little eyes. But hand making perfect circles is not my forte. However, a lathe, a lathe can hand, a lathe can make perfect circles very, very, very easily. It is its only job. So we will get to that. But rough brow layout is like, okay, cool. Uh, this entire, this entire uh, just the sculpt was roughly 12 to 16 hours. There's so much footage that has been cut of me just noodling the details. Believe it or not. Oh, oh, yep. Uh, making another cut. I get to hide a lot of crimes from the um, from the way that the mask is put together on the edges by putting a, a bandana over the entire thing. But this is where it's at so far. Uh, the cheeks aren't quite bulbous enough. The forehead lines need to be inset and not outset. The eyes, I measure something that I think is acceptable. Hindsight being twenty twenty, not supposed to be an eye pun. Uh, the eyes could have been a little bigger. They easily could have been a little bit bigger by even just like a half a centimeter. But uh, a quick excursion to the garage and ta-da! Perfect. The, uh, the eyes can be put into the clay very safely. Uh, there is a half inch wooden dowel, maybe an inch wooden dowel, in the center that I just jammed in the hole that I used to make the 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 outside round and it just happened to make a perfect little eyeball i was very happy about that so now i have a i have a way to see out of the dang thing when uh when we get there we'll get there so carve in the detail don't relief the detail and the eyebrows were a pain for every little bit that you see me touching the eyebrows, I have cut twice as much. Uh, the cheeks are also stressing me out because they're very close up in the reference. Like you see them like just sort of like bleep, like right up next to it. And I had to I had to reach a point where I just said, "This is fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. And if you have a way to make it better, go for it. If you don't, don't stress it. <laughs> if this was if this was like genuinely stressful and not just a challenge, I would have been like, nope, this is not for me right now. I, <laughs> there's so precious little time in the day. 
I'm not going to do something that stresses me out. This was very, very zen after a while. I felt I felt pretty dang good about it. Especially when we get to this phase. This is so much noodling. <laughs> this is so much noodling and refining and looking and just seeing where all the tiny things are. And we're only 15 minutes into the video and we are easily eight hours into the sculpt. And there are better sculptors out there that sculpt faster and more efficient. And man, my hat's off to you. If I wore a hat, it'd be on the ground right freaking now. And I wouldn't put it back on. I'd put on my mask. So I redo the eyebrows and the areas around the eye. Uh, everything needed to be a little bit more refined for just how I wanted it to look. So the cheeks need needed more bulb. That was certain. And they're not symmetrical, but I really start to grow very fond of the asymmetry of the whole thing. That is not something that I was necessarily prepared for. I am not good at symmetry. I am not good at uh, a lot of things, but if you're not good at something, you can take time. If you don't have time, you can gain skill by doing something badly a lot. If you do something badly and you learn from it, you're not doing something badly, you're learning how to do something. <laughs> uh, so if you have, say, money, money could get you a different way to sculpt that you might enjoy more. So the, there's sort of like a, a three-pronged graph. You either have money, skill, or time. And if you have all three, it makes you look like a, a freaking like legend, but that is neither here nor there. If you have time to spend, you can take your time and go slow. And as long as you're doing something, you can get that sort of like iteration time to feel like, okay, this didn't work. I'll try something else. This works. Can I make it better? And you just start putting in the work. I can make this mask, mask again, I feel, in about half the time. Um, but at the same time, I don't think I could have gone faster and I would not have been able to go slower with how I was making if that if, if any of that makes sense. I make a second mask right after this in a completely different clay medium. Uh, in a that'll be a, a different video. But holy hell, there's a lot of learning you can do. And there's a lot of getting good at something that you can do just by doing something, period. Look at this little guy. He's ready to, to chase down Tanjiro and just beat his ass. Again, uh, if you made it this far into this video on this channel and this isn't normally what you sign up for and you've already hit the unsubscribe button, I'd just like to say thanks for sticking around for as long as you have. If you're new, I, I have another cosplay mask coming um, in a later video. And if you like what you see, um, just like I'm trying to polish this turd, <laughs> go ahead and subscribe and I'll try and get better. But uh, yeah, thanks for your eyeballs and your attention. And if you make something, you don't even have to watch that much of this. Just, just share it. I want to see what people make. It's fun. It's cool. It's a great reason to wake up in the morning is just make stuff and try things like it's it's nice <laughs> so i'm trying to smooth it chemically uh, monster clay you can smooth isopropyl alcohol i have 99 percent isopropyl alcohol and it everybody's saying like use 91 and i would i would think that 99 percent would do better it was frustrating it is very frustrating to smooth out monster clay for me, for this surface area and not having a lot of like weird textures, this was a this was a pain. I greatly prefer just regular wet clay that you would get and use for pottery. It is so nice to smooth and it is so much more temperamental. <laughs> the temperamental part's not the cool part, but this I found brushing with a, a clay sponge and heat. Just a little bit of heat because you can very quickly destroy some of your work. Uh, did a pretty good job. I would highly recommend. But this is effectively sculpt done. 
Uh, we have a little little toot in the uh, in the mouth. We have a nice nice smooth bulbous cheeks. Uh, we free it from its its moldy moldy. We free it from its prison uh, for mold times. And depending on how I feel, this is this might just be an hour long video, which absolutely nobody likes. <laughs> but if it's all in one place, I I genuinely feel like it's it's nice, but. You know what? Let's go for it. We're gonna put we're gonna put up an hour long video, and I hope you like it because it's it's already in motion. So I am making a platform to make a mold off of, uh, and we are going to do a brush on platinum silicone mold. Uh, and platinum silicone these days is very expensive, and I would like to thank my sponsor, which is me. I pay for this. This is mine. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I I have the most experience using uh, platinum silicone. Uh, I have zero experience using tin silicone. And uh, I know what to expect. So, I'm going to make a little dam for a print coat. And I'm going to slightly raise the mask off of the surface of this platform. So that I can have a like a little little flange that can or a little like rim that can uh, be formed at the bottom. That'll be very very important. Uh, and I would like to say there are still tool marks and other various little things on this mask as it is. Um, I'm not super concerned with it at this point. I have had so little sleep and have been just going ape shit trying to get this thing done in, in under a week. And since I'm on the cusp of that, uh, there is a potential future for me to make a sanded smooth cast that becomes a new master mold or a new master copy to make a mold from. Um, but honestly, I really like the result that I ended up getting not doing any of that shit. <laughs> Uh, and the longer the video goes, apparently, the more I will swear. So, enjoy. Uh, and I'm also sealing down the edge. Uh, I don't want any silicone to get in under the mask. That would be not fun. Uh, as the wonderful people at Brick in the Yard say, that would be an expensive puddle. And I'm not... I don't have the liquid funds, believe it or not, to make expensive puddles. I'm making this mold out of 10-year-old <laughs> monster clay... Uh, or I'm making, I made this mask out of 10 year old monster clay. This turntable is something I got as a gift. Uh, all these tools are things I've had from my childhood, uh, where I honestly did no, no, nowhere near enough sculpting. Uh, the silicone that I am starting to use that I use for this mask is leftover. I did have to re up and that was really expensive, but, uh, y the smarter you are with your materials, the less you have to use of things. And it works out surprisingly well so it doesn't have to be a super expensive affair um, but if you have a smaller head than I do mine is as some would say crow magnon and large uh, which is true I have a large face that was a weird pop but I'm measuring out uh, a two-part silicone if you've been on this channel or seen anything uh, like this before, uh, it's exactly what you think it is. I'm measuring one-to-one -one by weight. Uh, what is this? Platsil Gel 25. Brick in the Yard is not a sponsor. Nobody sponsors this. Uh, if that was not clear from, I don't know, about the beginning of an hour-long mask-making video, let me assure you that I just really like them. They have tutorials for all of their products. They're fantastic. Go check out their channel. Support them. They're super, super nice, and they're super quick, and they're super local. Uh, I think they're, well, not local to me. They're they're uh, based in Texas. They're very, very, very knowledgeable people and will probably answer any question you have. So this is the print coat. Uh, this is non-thickened, just straight-up, well-mixed platinum silicone. It gets drizzled over everything, and this is not necessarily something I've seen them do, but it's a sort of a hybrid of other things that I've seen people do. 
and I can control where bubbles might form and just get like a nice even coating that uh, any subsequent silicone will stick to and just hold on to and uh, please don't demonetize me YouTube it's silicone and it's a mask for the love of God it's just a huge piece of chocolate being covered by silicone anyway um, and you just really have to be delicate with it uh, you have about five minutes, I think, before Platzil Gel 25 starts to gel and get sticky. Um, uh, it's also surprisingly safe for your skin. It's a food safe silicone if you follow all of the uh, sort of FDA rules for food safe uh, procedures. But the if anything gets on you that's been mixed, uh, it'll just cure on you and then peel off like a glue. Nice arm, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I have to rag on the guy in the video. He's just so weird. Uh, but you get this you get this stuff everywhere, and you also want to get a nice flange at the bottom. Uh, the I would say I would say that the um, the little wavy pattern doesn't matter, but it makes me feel good, and so that's why I did it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is, I wanted to do this in real time. You've been sitting through so much stuff that's been sped up so, so much. This is about how long you have to get a nice even coat. And a lot of it's going to pull at the bottom. But what that does is it takes care of that sort of rim and like the lip of the mask gets taken care of sort of all in one go. Uh, and that, that, that includes any subsequent print coats if you want to just sort of be a little safe because what's left on top of the mask is pretty thin. Uh, and if you do a couple of print coats, which doesn't act, doesn't make as much sense when I say it out loud, if you make a couple of thin coats, you can build up a, a, a slightly thicker layer on everything before you go to your thickened silicone. I don't know if I do that in this video. But I know that I've done multiple thin print coats in the past just for uh, sanity and safety. Also, it's very, very satisfying to just push this stuff around. It's so neat. Find yourself a, something small to mold and cast. It's very fun. There's another casting channel. Uh, I'll try and put it up on the screen or put it in my description. The guy only molds and casts, and he is a brilliant, brilliant dude. Uh, clearly been in toys for a very long time. Uh, I found I found I find his stuff very interesting, and it's not super easy to watch a lot of mold making back to back to back. He makes it pretty interesting. So we're getting into a point where if I keep messing with it, I could pull silicone away from the master, and I don't want that to happen. So I stopped getting too handsy with it. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, one, probably one more brush around and then uh, we're gonna go to back to the time lapse. Everything in this process takes forever. Yeah, you can see how it's changing, how it, you can see how the silicone changes, how it reacts to being sort of like pushed around. It's starting to gel very slowly. And Platzil Gel 25 takes an hour to demold. So I need to let this rest for at least 30 minutes before I do anything uh, like add another coat. But you don't want to let this coat sit around for a while. This became very, very heavy on dry instruction. And I just want you to know, it could help later. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, I think right about now... Yeah, I was just trying to make sure there wasn't a bubble that formed in the nose. Right about now is roughly when I, I call it quits. I need to stop messing with the nose, man. you got to stop making me a liar. Just stop it. Stop it. God, past Adrian is in so much trouble. There we go. Back to the time lapse. So this 
This is what the exact same stuff. The only difference is I put two drops of tin thicks in there, and tin thicks is a thickener that turns it into turns any silicone I found so far into a po into a spreadable peanut butter like consistency. And uh, man, it does the job. Uh, later, you will see that I almost ruined something that I've worked this long on by trying something different. It, I'm only going to use tin thicks from here on out. There's no reason for me to almost destroy a project. But right now, I'm trying to build up enough silicone that I'm getting rid of any undercuts that the mother mold might potentially uh, grab onto and stop me from being able to remove the mother mold and uh, the master from the master and any future casts from it. So I spilled a silicone filler that was supposed to save me time and thicken things, and this is what happened. Near disaster. Uh, I had to vacuum up the silicone because it's basically like small bits of glass. I put on a mask this whole time. I was miserable and swearing and so, so warm in my own room. <laughs> uh, I did get lucky, and this didn't ruin anything, but... Now my mold looks like an absolute pile of garbage, and like birds, absolutely used it like a statue. So, building up layer by layer, I am just putting on enough, enough plaster bandages to hold this thing in place. That's its only goal. Clean up, don't pour your plaster into a... Ooh. I've been wanting to do stop motion this entire week, so I did a little bit during the time lapse. But you want all of your plaster to sort of overlap itself and avoid pushing it into the details. Because now I gotta get the plaster off and this is stressful. So, let's hope that this wasn't a waste of all my time. No, no, it wasn't a waste of my time at all. It worked. And it came off very, very easily, and it kept its shape, and it just goes right back on. See how excited he is? Look at that excited guy. And his cool t-shirt and his super uh, fancy mask. So, uh, a little bit of mold cleanup is a little bit of mold cleanup is in order. Uh, getting some of the excess silicone off the edge, uh, the flange has to come off. If you make your mold well, you don't have to destroy the master if it's made out of clay when it comes off. So let's see how I did. Uh, and this is the second most stressed out I've been in quite a while. But the flange, easy. Not a problem. It's off, it can go in the pot, it can be remelted. I'm gonna filter out all the uh, crap that's gotten into it, hopefully. <laughs> and now let's free our baby. If you do it cleanly, you minimize how much you have to clean later. This is super, super important. Platzel Gel 25 is a really tough silicone. Uh, it returns to its shape well. It's durometer 25, whatever the fuck that means for hardness. And uh, it just means that it's a little bit harder than Platzil Gel 10, which is a 10 durometer, which is used uh, in some cases for prosthetics and stuff like that. That is the more specific answer. And, all right, the cheeks are free, forehead's free. Uh, almost everything is free. Any violent motion is... I'm getting sweaty, and I know how this turns out. <laughs> Based on the thumbnail, I'm pretty sure you know how this turns out. How do, how do we do? Okay. Uh, looks like it's intact. That's pretty cool. That's a super neat, fun job thing you did there. Can you get out little bird beak? Boop. Yes, you can. The master survives. That can't really happen with traditional wet clay or anything like that. So I need to find something that I can rest the mask in. I think you can hear me laughing in the background. 
That's a mold, baby. Is ready. So, we are casting urethane resin. Uh, it's going to be multiple slosh coats, usually uh, two or three, maybe three or four. Uh, and this first one is usually always a throwaway. You're doing it to get some of the clean out out of the way. Uh, there was not a lot of stuff to pull out of the mold that was like really like grody, which was super cool and fun. But have some blood red clear resin. <laughs> this is the first coat. It's old resin, and I wasn't expecting this cast to necessarily be any good, but um, or I wasn't expecting the resin to do great. I just was really hopeful that it would cure. And let's just say I get a little bit lucky sometimes. Because you move it all around, and when it's clear, you, you basically... <laughs> you have to be really careful about brushing it too because if it if it gels on you, it'll just stick to the brush and pull away from the mold and ruin one full cast. Uh, so, eventually I just let it sit and the resin sort of like pulls back in on itself, which is fine. It's an awful long time you're taking for this shot. Really glad you left that in the edit. <laughs> But I have uh, another not-quite-so-clear resin that cures completely white. And this is all by volume. I'm really... Uh, there's nothing very fun or specific about the mixing. You just mix for 30 seconds, and when it's a, when it's a slosh cast, you can let it get warm in your hand. You, you really can. Uh, if anything, it might give you more time, because when it gets thin like that, it takes longer to cure and you're sloshing for a much longer time than you would be if you let it sit in your hand for a minute. If it cures in two minutes, like like literally like no going back after two minutes, the stuff will just be like foop and flash on you very quickly. Uh, if you let it get halfway or if you're really brave a little more, you can get a thicker slosh coat, uh, p potentially a more even slosh coat, but... Uh, it everything that you're doing, you're playing with fire. Are you more patient? Or are you more thorough? Are you trying to be tricky or something like that? Like just whatever you do when you cast things, just know your materials. That is more important than anything else. I've used this stuff forever for all different kinds of things, and you can see it's it's changing. And when it's changing there's pretty much just like the thinnest bits will go uh, uncured for the longest time, but sped up at, I don't know, right now it might be 400%, but sped up at like 1200 to 2000%, maybe we'll see the rest of it changing. Man, it's subtle. But you can see it. Once it's all opaque... It is done curing. There we go. It takes about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, a little longer, a little shorter, depending on uh, what thinness or how hot your uh, home is or anything like that. <laughs> and then magically, a third coat of gross brown. Uh, love it. Fantastic. But the first cast is about to come out of the mold, so this is exciting. Exciting is one word for it. It's also kind of just as stressful as it is uh, when you're taking the master out of something. Because you get to find out if your mold works. You get to find out if you did something wrong that you might not be able to see uh, at the very first layer. This is a little nerve-wracking, but it is part of the process. So, I'll see how I did.
very gentle. The The more gentle you are with your molds, the longer they'll last in general. The thing that really degrades them is heat. So uh, this doesn't generate a tremendous amount of heat, but the more that you have, sort of the worse off that you, you have, um, the less pulls that you can get out of it before it starts to degrade. And by degrade, I mean like the silicone gently changes to a foggier color. Uh, it becomes more brittle. There are cracks. It tears. That just happens. You can't avoid it. That is why you keep one. You keep one casting or your master so that you can always make the mold again. If anything went catastrophically wrong and I had to remake the mold, as long as the master survives, I can do that. Uh, it'll cost a pretty penny. Like... It'll cost time and money, and in a lot of cases, both of those things are the same thing. Didn't mean to sound like a really irate dad, but I'm told that that's part of me for some reason. <laughs> um, but this little bird beak is giving me a bit of trouble. It just needs air to go up it. There we go. There we go. And it's out. You can see the, the the darker parts are where the clear resin pooled. And the white resin uh, was not close enough to the surface to make it like lighter. But this upsetting to look at mask is the first official pull from the thing. It's not gross. It's not grody. It captured all the details. Every tool mark is visible that was left. Uh, the... Fun fact number three of the video, every, every detail that the silicone touches, it can replicate all the way down to the texture of the ridge of your fingerprint. It is very, very cool stuff. So naturally, first one comes out, do it again. When in doubt, do it again. That's just what you do. You don't make one mask when you make a bold. You make a backup because you don't know what bad things can happen. You don't want bad things to happen, but that's why I made this in general. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to let the time lapse show that the brown that I used sort of relaxes and becomes a lighter brown as it cures, but I believe that I failed implicitly at that, uh, at that attempt. Uh, also, lots of gloves when you're using urethane dye. Lots of gloves when you're using urethane, period. It's worse than super glue when it gets on your skin. And it it cures to you. And it's just blech. You should also, according to much smarter people than me, wear a mask when you do this stuff. Urethane does off-gas. And you should probably have something that is approved for that. Uh, I, You can see a mask on the ground over there. That is more so for particulate uh, and less so for fumes. But that being said, keep yourself safe and do your hobbies safely. You would put a helmet when you would, if you get on a bike and you don't put on a helmet, you're asking to die. <laughs> it's the same concept and apparently I'm asking to die. Uh, anyway, here's an interesting thing that happened. I mixed the resin wrong by just a little bit and some of some of one of the things that happens is it gets sort of greasy and it's like when you have too much of the resin part and or too much of the curing part and not enough of the resin you get this really really like oily surface on it and the inside thankfully was the only thing that, that had that on but it requires a lot of like it requires a lot of cleanup and it's really really it's just nasty. So this backup mask already had something go pretty wrong with it. Uh, and not pictured. I cast it again. I keep, I just do it again. When in doubt, I've, I've figured out the trick to get everything apart. So it's become less stressful to demold, which I do really like. Yeah, the outside of it turned out all right. Uh, I wanted to make it brown because I wanted it to feel like wood if it ever got scratched. Um, it would stick out, but it wouldn't be like, oh no, uh, there's damage on it. It's like, well, it's damaged, but it has character as opposed to just looking flat out wrong. 
very gentle with your with your master molds. And that is the casting phase. So, cat um, modeling successful, cast successful. The first round of paint. <laughs> this is done so old school, and it worked out way better than I thought that I had the hands for. This is just acrylic paint, painting by hand with a brush. Nothing fancy, and I love the color that it got, but I, I tried to do some, I guess, like acrylic ink washing sort of things. Didn't go over great. So I invested in a lifelong tool, which I have avoided getting for the longest time, a little airbrush, if it's not clear. The setup, very boring, but this is the very first time that it spit paint out when I figured out you had to pull the thing back to make it, to make it fucking spew the paint. Again, swearing was promised the longer this goes. And if you have made this for 46 minutes, unbroken, unabated, and just thank you. That's in, that is, that makes me feel like this is worth it. If you skip to this part and you're like, I haven't been watching for 45 minutes, fair enough. So, of course, the very first thing that I do <laughs> is not prime it at all. <laughs> and. I am painting the backup mask first with the airbrush to learn how to use the airbrush. Sorry. I'm learning how to use the airbrush and I'm also uh, figuring out what does and doesn't work for uh, how to color large surfaces. Uh, so this isn't just me like foregoing getting a rattle can and doing this the fastest way possible. Uh, this is me learning how to mix colors. This is me learning like how far away that I can get to and from this to get different effects. Uh, even though I'm doing one big old solid color right now, like this was, it was useful to just go for it. The lighting is kind of terrible, but it's not supposed to be as orange or saturated as it is. I got way better color mixing by hand with traditional paints. Uh, and even I got a little bit of gap filling for free with acrylic, uh, especially because I used so damn much of it. <laughs> but this, the goal for the airbrush is to give it sort of accents and shadows and uh, more layers of color that I think even with zero experience with an airbrush, I could get just by just by being very not generous what's the other word very um oh god what is the word just being efficient with the paint that you use smart good no no the word is gone it does not exist in the human language uh so <laughs> Yeah, now I have a proper spray booth as well. And I am experimenting with a lighter color that I didn't realize I had put pearlescent uh, white paint in. I'm also very new at getting airbrush paint. <laughs> but it, it still works out. It, this is a sort of more saturated pink peach, but it's getting... It's getting the job done, and I'm trying not to go over the whole thing. This isn't to cover the whole thing. It's just, just, just put it in places and see what it looks like. This is another part of learning. I've also turned the volume of the video down by an enormous amount because there's so much noise. There's the compressor that goes off. There's the fan that is keeping me alive. There's the sound of me breathing through my uh, respirator mask. There's this nightmare that continues, ever ending into the void. When you look into the eyes of the hoot, <laughs> his little mouth. So, I experiment on the backup mask, and then it's time to do the real thing on the real mask. So, I sort of liked 
the way that it treated it, but I'm not going for full coverage. I'm trying to supplement this with richer colors in different places. I do end up having, having to repaint the eyebrows from overspray and repaint the eyes a couple of times, but uh, in, the, in the end, it feels like it was just worth going through and doing. So, uh, that first layer dried, and I'm going to practice the shadows on the backup mask. But I would like you to see how much I can see out of this mask, which is next to nothing. I am so sorry if, like, I try to keep my hands very tight to myself while I was walking around uh, the convention this was for, but... Just keep in mind that looking through this mask, I am at a severe disadvantage from cars, people, uh, sound. If somebody yells at me, I don't know if they're yelling at me unless they say this character's name or they know me personally. The mask usually stops both of those things from happening. But I'm mixing up a sort of a shadow color. Make sure that it actually comes out of the air gun. Learning to, learning to clean the... Uh, air gun airbrush is it, it's a it's a bit of a chore it was it's it's worth doing i enjoy airbrushing enough that it's not really all that big a deal so i'm adding shadow where shadow would go uh mostly because i wanted richer colors where i thought they belonged uh i don't know if this is the correct way to do any of this but this is the way that I did it. So it's kind of too late to undo any of this. Could I redo it in the future? Sure. Am I going to? No. <laughs> but uh, that's why working on the backup mask, I found, I found that this color wasn't quite dark enough, but it did end up making a uh, middle layer of color that was really, really nice. And it had a, this had a better transition for the shadows than the final mask because of this little layer here. But the final mask had a better range of colors overall. And it, it had more of that, like, it had more of the handmade feel than just like, this doesn't look manufactured, don't get me wrong. It's just this is a backup for a reason. So I'm trying to get a little bit of airbrush inside of the creases. I did fine, but I had very, very nervous hands for this. Under his little cheeks, his little cheek balls. I'm trying to stop paint from getting everywhere. I do an okay job. Again, I had to repaint the eyebrows and the eyes at least one more time for both of these masks. This was a good Saturday, though. <laughs> I remember because it was a very, very long Saturday. So now it is go time. There's something to be said for committing. Committing to something is... You just... You just make a decision you can't undo. That's it. It's like, okay. Undoing it takes more work than doing it again. That is a significant amount of commitment. And you can see that this, this color is way darker. So I was panicking a little, but I decided to make it consistent. And I could always go back over it with another like mid-tone later. But I found that when I was looking directly at the mask, it did what I wanted. It did what I wanted, and that was, like, it, it gave me dimension for free, even in poor lighting, which I exist in. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with that, and uh, yeah, this is just me going ham. I wish there were better sounds to this, because right now, it is several decibels I'm wearing uh, headphones and ear protection because it's a lot. <laughs> a little bit of shading in the creases and the details that I've already made. Uh, everything is to accent what's there. None of it is to cover up what's already been done. And even though the lighting is really harsh right there, it did what I wanted. It did what I wanted pretty good. So... 
I think I think we're gonna do that middling color just real quick. <laughs> you can see my complex uh, mixing method. And this is acrylic uh, airbrush paint, less toxic than other things. Uh, so it's going to be all over my hands all the time. That's just how that's happening. There is no getting around it. So yeah, I'm trying to pull back some of the harsh darkness that I created and redo a little bit of everything just like while I'm here. I'm usually a big fan of when a project is done uh, going back and doing it again just feels, it feels like it's a bit much. So get something done to your, get something done to where you like it and then just call it a day, do something new, like for your sanity and to keep things sort of like fresh and yourself happy with, uh, trying new things and just everything being exciting and not staying stagnant. Either do something completely new or do something that you do very well with a, a, a new goal in mind. It has helped me a lot over the years. And I have many years on me, as it turns out. Look at this little guy. He's just a mask. He's just a little freak. <laughs> and I made him. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane that... that I never thought that I would do anything like this, and I did. And that the next couple of weeks, I made another mask for my friend uh, from this same show. That'll be a future video. It has come up probably four times now. <laughs> and uh, I, we sewed together uh, a bunch of costumes and just went for it. Went for it in a way that uh, just felt good to make something even though not a lot of it was perfect. So, the backup mask. When you look at it from underneath, it's like a shark. It's colored it's colored like um something uh anyway. You can see that uh in the details, uh these have been clear coated with a uh, matte clear coat and even the matte clear coat gave it a, just a little a little hint of shine. Um, and that doesn't bother me in the slightest, but you can really see that, uh, that it, what's there pops as opposed to just being one flat color. And I could have done that if I mixed paints together and had better brush technique, but I am very, very excited to have a, an airbrush in my arsenal and, uh, a little bit of padding. I had Velcroed this together. Honestly, I'm surprised the Velcro lasted as long as it did. I didn't secure it any other way other than a sticky back, but the the mask is padded. I carved out a little bit of the inside of the nose so I would be able to register it to my face. Yes, I agree. Almost, almost attempted to put a hole all the way through the mouth, but yeah, that's mask done. You've been listening to me talk for almost an entire hour. I hope you have a lovely day. If you haven't been listening to me that long, maybe go back. Maybe don't. Maybe do something that you want to do. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, there will be more later. Good job. Congratulations, man. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Bye.